Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Parkasaurus on the Nintendo Switch. Now Parkasaurus is a time management park builder that just released on the Nintendo Switch on April 28th of 2022, and it currently sells on the Nintendo Switch eShop for $24.99. Now this game was both developed and published by Washbear Studios and it has a download size of 275 megabytes. Now is this colorful cartoony take on the dinosaur park builder going to be a successful one? Or should it have liked the dinosaurs remained extinct? Well, we'll try to figure that out today in our review. Just remember that if you are appreciating the content, consider hitting that like button. Now storyline wise, I don't think it's going to surprise anyone as this being a park builder, there really is nothing to tell here. I mean, you do get a slight cutscene at the beginning where you see a bunch of dinosaurs loading into a rocket and firing off and landing on the earth. I'm not sure if they're saying that dinosaurs are aliens or if that's how these dinosaurs came into current times, but overall story wise, that's pretty much it. Now, if you do play through the world map mode, you do have slight descriptions that will set up each individual scenario, but I wouldn't really call that storyline. But for a park builder, storyline is completely not necessary, so we're going to be moving on. So now, if we go and jump straight into the gameplay. Now, just to begin, there are a lot of moving parts in Parkasaurus. We will be going over the main features here. However, there are so many features and I don't want this to wind up being a 30 minute long review. We will go over just the basics. There's a lot to learn through the gameplay. Now, first of all, comparisons are obviously gonna be made between this game and the current Jurassic World Evolution that is also available on the eShop. However, just to be perfectly clear, Parkasaurus is a much more chill type of park builder than Jurassic World Evolution, which I would say is more focused around disaster management. And while that works perfectly well for the Jurassic Park slash World series, perfectly in line with the movies, it's not what Parkasaurus is going for. Parkasaurus is actually much closer from a game from the Tycoon series. And if you've ever played the old PC game, Zoo Tycoon or Zoo Tycoon 2, it is right in line with what you would have gotten from one of those games. Now your dinosaurs can escape here, however the rampages won't be as damaging as in that other game. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, in my 20 plus hours of gameplay so far, as long as you have enough janitors in your park, I've only had one breakout in the full 20 hours. So now that the comparison's out of the way, let's jump actually into the mechanics of this game. So first of all, Parkasaurus isn't just about setting up some fences, slapping a door down and throwing some food in a pen. You actually have to make biomes for each type of dinosaur. So once you've actually set up an area, you're going to have to do things like putting the proper trees, the proper amount of water and elevation to your environment. Now, even though all this might seem like a lot, don't worry, the system is very simple and intuitive. And after going through it once or twice, it'll be easy to adapt it for any type of dinosaur. Now, once you have your pen set up, just as in any good park builder, you also need employees to run your park. And in this game, you have four types of employees. You have security guards, janitors, veterinarians, and scientists. Each have an individual role to play. Janitors will clean up your park and keep your fences mended. Janitors will feed your dinosaurs and heal them up when they're sick. Security guards keep unruly patrons under control. And lastly, scientists will generate what are called science points, which is the main way you'll get upgrades for your park. Now, if you thought you all you would be doing is managing dinosaurs here, well, your main goal here isn't only to make beautiful dinosaur exhibits, but it's also to make money. Now, there are various ways you'll be doing this throughout the game, but the two main methods are number one, through donation boxes that you can set up in front of your exhibits. And number two, by setting up stores that will sell food and other types of souvenirs. Now, lastly, on the main gameplay mechanics for a basic setup, you'll have the portal. The portal is how you and your employees can go dig for new dinosaur fossils. These different fossils are how you'll be able to develop new dinosaurs for your park. Now, the interesting part in this is it's actually a mini game. It's one that you can also automate. However, that will cost you extra money. But if not, it's all about lining up the different shapes and uncovering all the different fossils. Once again, after a few trial runs, you'll get a hang of it. 
and for most part of the game, these little side games are actually a nice distraction. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these are only the basic elements of the park builder. There are a lot of deeper mechanics here, like associating the right medication when your dinosaurs are sick, evolving your exhibits into new thematics with active volcanoes and such, and even once your dinosaurs reach maturity, you can fit them with special hats that will add to their appeal and sometimes give them bonus stats. Now, The way you learn about these advanced mechanics is through the world map. You do have a basic tutorial at the beginning, but after that, each one of the scenarios will focus on a new element of the park building and really evolve your knowledge. Not only that, but after successfully completing missions in the various scenarios, it will give you points for your ship that you can trade in for permanent upgrades, such as starting out a new scenario with extra dinosaur eggs, or have your patrons spend more money in your park. There's also a bonus option in each one of the scenarios, which is sort of a time trial where if you can complete the missions within a set number of days, you get a bonus ship point. Now, from my personal experience, to complete any of these, you'll have to first get some of those upgrades because trying them from scratch is very challenging. But other than just teaching you about the game, I found that the world map mode was actually quite entertaining and offered easily more than 20 hours of gameplay. Now, once you're done with the world map mode or when you're just fed up of it, you can move on to a customized game. A customized game is basically a sandbox mode where you get free reign to build whichever type of park you want. Now, it's enjoyable to know that you can switch to this sandbox mode at any time during your gameplay. The world map mode will teach you more about the game and give you those permanent upgrades. However, neither are necessary to set up your own customized park and get everything out of this game. And furthermore, through trial and error, you can most likely figure out most of the advanced parts yourself. It just might take a little bit longer. Now, as I said earlier, I could easily keep going on the mechanics of this game, but I do want to keep this review to an acceptable length. The end result is that Parkasaurus is a very complete and well-built park builder. And if I only had maybe one gripe with it, is that the challenge level is a little bit too casual. Don't get me wrong, I had tons of fun setting up my park and there are certain challenges here. However, if you're patient enough and you take your time, failure is almost non-existent. You can see that they aimed at this being a cozy and friendly park builder and that's what they delivered. So now if we move on to the controls. In the process of porting park builders to consoles, one of the most difficult elements to adapt is having it work with a controller. Now, although we are going to go into a few details, I just want to say that for a console park builder, the controls here actually function very well, and once you get used to them, are very comfortable. Now, we're not going to go through what each button does, because depending on which menu you're in, it will be slightly different, but the important part to note is that moving around your park is very easy, changing angles for division is also once again very easy, and setting up pens, paths, and even clearing areas is made very easy thanks to some quality of life options. Rather than have to install sections of fence one by one, you just press the A button on one end of the fence, click where you want it to end, and it'll make a straight fence line for you. Placing a door down doesn't require you to delete that part of the fence, you just place it over the part of the fence you want and the door replaces the normal fencing. Even when deleting different elements, there's even a couple of options where you can choose what type of element you want to delete, select a whole part of the map, and it'll only delete the types of elements you've chosen. And in reality, I only had two problems with the controls here. Number one is that depending on which menu you are in, sometimes navigating from right to left is using the ZR, ZL triggers, and at other times it's using the L and R bumpers. Now in itself, that doesn't seem like an issue, but since it alternates between the two, if you're sometimes in the wrong menu and you use the wrong bumper, it'll unfortunately get you completely out of that menu, meaning you'll have to return to it and start your options over again. Now this didn't break the gameplay or cause this game to be unfun, however it was just annoying and getting a hang of when to use which set of buttons will take a little muscle memory at the beginning. And number two, when you want to select only one individual object to sometimes move it or delete it, sometimes getting your cursor to select that one and only object can be quite difficult. 
However, yet again, there is a workaround. It's only a simple notion of sometimes changing the viewing angle that you're from or zooming in or out to make selecting that object easier. Just do keep that in mind that if you're trying to select one tree, one dinosaur, one item, and it's not working, just change your viewing angle, zoom in or out, and it'll make things much easier. But overall, for my findings, for a park builder that originated on PC and had to be adapted for a controller, it was very well done here. Now next, if we move on to the graphics and sound. Now, before launching into this review, I did take a few minutes to look at a couple of videos from the PC version. And I've got to say that Parkosaurus, although it aims at a low res cartoony style of dinosaur, has nonetheless taken a hit for its port to the Nintendo Switch. Now, overall, that doesn't mean that the game isn't nonetheless still visually attractive. It's just that if you've played it on the PC, you'll probably notice the downgrade. They also seem to have restricted the zoom options here, where on PC you could zoom in much closer to the dinosaurs and environments, while on the Switch version you can't go in quite as close. Now if you've never played the PC version and you're just jumping onto the Switch however, everything will look just right and just fine for a park builder. These dinosaurs might be a little small when they're babies, but once they grow to maturity, you'll see that they're nice, colorful, and the details are visually available if you zoom in. Also, as I stated earlier, this is a very colorful, cartoony version of dinosaurs, and it really does help sell that overall cozy feeling that the game is going for. So overall, I've got to say, although it's a slight downgrade from the PC version, we've still got a very solid visual package overall. Now, sound-wise for Parkosaurus, I'll be honest, I was just left indifferent. Once again, they're going for a chill and cozy game, and that's what the background soundtrack really delivers here. But because of that as well, it just isn't memorable and doesn't, I find, elevate the gameplay. And I've got to say, if you start playing the game for long periods of time, the background music just totally blends in and I wasn't even noticing it anymore. On the upside, however, there were some nice sound effects throughout the game. Your dinosaurs will emit little squeaks, you'll hear a little bit of laughter from your patrons. If you zoom into a store, you'll hear the little cash register ringing. And overall, that's maybe what they were going for. Since this is a park builder, they didn't want to steal away from the experience with the soundtrack. They wanted it to focus on the sound effects. So once again, although it wasn't overly remarkable, I do think they delivered an okay sound package. So now it's time for the verdict. And if this is one of the first reviews of mine you're watching, just to let you know my full review scale is down below in the description of the video. Now in the case of Parkosaurus on the Nintendo Switch, I'm going to be giving it an 8, putting it on the low end of a great game. Overall, for $25, I think they're delivering a very complete and a very cozy and enjoyable park builder on the Nintendo Switch. Not only that, but it's offering hours and hours of gameplay at a pretty modest price. I was actually impressed that the world map mode lasted me way more than 20 hours. Because when I gave that 20 hour figure, that's for someone rushing through the events. If you're taking your time with Parkosaurus, it can be way more than that. Honestly, I really enjoyed my time with Parkosaurus, so much so that currently I'm building a custom park that I'm working on from time to time. In reality, the only major point here that I would say that kept me from giving it an even higher score is that since it aimed at being such a cozy game, the challenge level for me was a little bit low for a park builder. But who knows, maybe if the developers are listening, they could add in a new gameplay mode eventually with a really tough challenge for park builder enthusiasts. But now, I want to hear from all of you. Are you going to be picking up Parkosaurus on the Nintendo Switch? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget on the way out that if you did like the content, to please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already, and hitting the notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.